I'm sitting here during the lunch break of our European Identity Conference, day number three, together with Felix from Hanko. Welcome, Felix. Thank you, Martin. Uh, happy to be here. Yeah, pleasure. And uh, I think it's also great to be back on a um, hybrid event, meeting with people face to face, Definitely. talking with people face to face. Um, Felix, tell me a little bit about Hanko. What is Hanko doing? I think many might not have heard the name of your company or, uh, before. So, so what what is your business? What are you doing? Yeah, sure. Let me start with a quick uh, with a quick story behind the name. Why we we call ourselves Hanko. Hanko is in, in Japan and Korea, it's a, it's a stamp, and you sign documents with it instead of the, the manual signature. And uh, the domain was available three years ago when I started the company. Mm -hmm. So we called, it, we called it Hanko because we do digital signatures to replace passwords. Okay. So that's, that's the idea behind our company. And, and how do you do that? So um, replacing passwords first is a good idea. Yeah. So when we look at what the US CISA um, announced just a few days ago, uh, the other week, um, they said single factor authentication, and a lot of what we do with passwords is that, is formally declared being a bad practice. So that part is very clear beyond passwords. But what do you mean by using signatures? Yeah. So. As you said, the password is inherently bad today to use as a, as a factor. Everyone does it still. There's, uh, it is a common practice. But you can today there are standards available on the internet to replace the password by digital signatures and combine the signature, this proof of possession factor, combine it with the biometric factor or a form of local authentication for your device. And these standards are called FIDO and WebAuthn. And this is what we specialize in. Yeah, and, and and when you just then say when you have this this stamp analogy, so is it that you that you more on the I sign a document like I do with a handwritten signature, or is it more on the authentication no, side no. or both? We get that a lot, but in the end, it is it is just for authentication. So re-authenticating users, um, the signature part, we have to go into the technical details uh, to make that clear. But in the end. Uh, with FIDO, with WebAuthn, you have a private key on your device and you use that for digital signatures that, that prove the possession of this key without the key needing to leave your device. So this is a signature in yes. the end and that's, that's so, the analogy. So at the end, it's passwordless authentication, which is based on um, having two types of factors. One is the device yeah. and one is your biometric. Exactly. Um, both strong factors. Yeah, um, and I think that that is something which may, might may deserve a little bit more explanation because uh, in, in uh, several talks I had around passwordless authentication, I think it's still not a hundred percent clear what is happening. And I think this is what you say with the signature: it's not a password traveling or something like that. It is just cryptographic exactly. information traveling. Exactly. And the beauty of it is, it it happens completely behind the scenes. So the user is not aware of anything uh, happening of this rather complex stuff behind the scenes. The user only sees Touch ID, Face ID, Windows Hello, or Android Biometrics, whatever it is available on the platform, and that's it. Yeah. So it's 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 as simple as it can get, and as strong as it can get today as well. So that's that's so, really the beauty. So of it. and and what what are the business use cases you come in? What are the scenarios? Yeah. You come in where you serve your customers. Great question. So um, we, we see a lot of potential. Obviously, it is in the end, we see it on every login. So not only on the 5% of logins that are two-factor secure today, but also on the other 95% of all logins. Mm -hmm. This is what we aim for, and that is the market we build our product for. But today, of course, you have to cater to the market that is available today. And we speak with banks. We do PUCs with banks. We did a PUC with SAP, so securing the central central um, identity stack of SAP. Uh, and we also see very, um, very good use cases in e-commerce, for example. That, that, that's what I would dare to say. You know, when, when, I, when I look at um, what happens today when I'm doing some purchasing in, in the internet and over the past couple of months, I, I really moved. Uh, so for a certain period, I had a 100% uh, sort of online supply chain for everything, food, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. So I really 
found found um, whatever online supermarkets, etc. So that I, I got got everything here, and it always was username, password. Yeah. Oh, back to bad practice. Uh, and and I think that that is really one of the big areas. Um, so is how how easy is it, or how complex is it? For let's say an on online retailer, maybe not a super big one even, um, to to make this big step away from the bad to the good practice. Yeah. So this is this is basically our product enabling, uh, for example, an e-commerce uh, e-commerce merchant uh, to plug in this technology into their uh, e-commerce system, whatever they use, because we cater mostly to developers. We have uh, an mm -hmm. API for that and, and SDKs for all major platforms, some plugins. So we make it as easy as it can be uh, for someone to implement that. And as you uh, as you said, e-commerce had a huge uptick uh, over the over the last 12 months. Uh, at the same time, the 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 latest uh, stage of the PSD2 re uh, regulation kicked mm -hmm. in and made, uh, especially for credit card payments, uh, made the the uh, strong customer authentication a requirement for all payments. There are some exemptions, but in the end, it's not only the password that is involved. It is also a, a second step that typically redirects the user to the bank, to the issuing bank of the credit card. And this is a, this is a, a huge downer. Uh, this yeah. is uh, 10 to 20 percent uh, of all purchases are dropped at that, at that moment. Yeah. And with, uh, with our technology, uh, you can enable basically a touch ID login to the e-commerce merchant and uh, also the touch ID checkout. And that's it. So the merchant can control the, the flow uh, from start to end without having to redirect anywhere. And this is something uh, we get very good feedback from from yeah. as well. So, so it's, it's about solving the payment challenges, having a more convenient way for the user to log in by just using what he has on the device yeah. and increasing the level of security. And I think this is a big thing in passwordless authentication if yeah. done right. Yeah. It's about improving both security yeah. and convenience. Definitely. So definitely very interesting. Thank you, Felix, for taking the time. It was Felix from Hanko here at European Identity Conference 2021. Thank you for listening in. Thank you very much.